All right. Um, I would presume the state wants to go first. Yes, Judge. Um, and I didn't know if you were going to do the registry after the I am because it's going to be upon conviction, so we've already done that. Right. Okay. Um, yes, Judge, we have uh, four family members who would like to address the court and the defendant at this time. Judge. Okay. I'm asking each person to state their full name and the relationship to Todd. Okay, please, thank you. Uh, Sean Dingus, D-I-N-D-E-S-S. I'm -S. Todd's brother. I just want you to know how many lives you've affected by this. My brother and children, and you'll never see him again. There's just so many things I'd like to say, but I don't believe it at that. <clears throat> Your Honor, first I want to say thank you for allowing me to address you in this court today. I am Mary, and I share a child with um, the victim, Dr. Todd Morgan. I stand before you today, not just as a grieving friend, but as a voice for our daughter who will never have the chance to grow up with her father. Dr. Morgan was an exceptional intellectual devoted to his students and colleagues. He recently received an award in 2024 for his significant contributions to research, but tragically he was not alive to accept it. His kindness and inspiration touched everyone around him and the academic community has now lost a remarkable mentor. Todd was also a loving father. Since his murder, my daughter's life has been irrevocably altered. At just six years old, she is at one of the most impressionable stages of her life. She was only four when she waited at school for her dad to pick her up, not understanding why he never came. When I arrived, she was confused and desperately wanted to call him, but each call went unanswered. I had to explain to her that her daddy wouldn't be coming back because someone had hurt him. I watched her curl up in my arms, hiding her face as she processed this unimaginable loss. For months following, she would cry out for us whenever we left the room, terrified that we wouldn't return. This fear of abandonment stemmed directly from the sudden absence of her father. She struggled with being alone even for a moment and faced challenges no child should ever have to endure. This trauma is emotional, confusing, and deeply rooted. She has navigated many milestones without her dad by her side, and I worry about the long-term effects of this loss as she grows older and begins to comprehend what has happened. Her friends have already started asking about her father's death, and I find myself at a loss for how to explain it to such young children. I have been taking her to therapy to provide her the support she needs to cope with life without her dad. But no amount of therapy can fill the void that he unwillingly left behind. The impact of this loss lingers in our daily lives. I ask the court to consider the profound effects this crime has had on us. Dr. Todd Morgan was more than a victim. He was a beloved father, friend, and educator. His legacy deserves to be honored, and I hope that justice will be served not only for him, but for his children, who deserve to grow up in a world that remembers their father with love and respect. Now, Your Honor, if you will allow it, I would like to address the guilty party. <clears throat> you may. Ms. Michelle. You have caused immense pain to many in this room. That pain exists because Todd was so deeply loved. We are all deeply loved. Despite our suffering, I find myself feeling sorry for you. You do not know love. If you had ever truly loved or been loved, we would not be here in this courtroom today. And with you and your situation as you now stand, I pity you for the emptiness of your existence. You have lived a life devoid of love, support, and purpose, and now you face a future devoid of any chance for redemption. 
what should have been some of the best days of your life will instead be spent in a bleak repetition of regret. I do not envy you or the life you have chosen. That is all, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor, for allowing us to speak today. My name is Matthew Metz, last name spelled M-E-T-Z. I am speaking on behalf of all of our family. I'm Todd's cousin, speaking on behalf of all of our family who are with us presently in the courtroom and with us all through Zoom. Your Honor, we stand before you today not just as grieving family, but as the voices of the people who knew and loved Todd the most whose life was so cruelly taken from us. No words can fully express the pain and the emptiness and the profound sense of loss that we feel every day since Todd was murdered. Todd was not just another statistic. He was a loving father of two beautiful children, Aaron and Cece. He was a kind and compassionate son to Sandy. He was a loving brother to Sean. He was a caring uncle. He was an amazing cousin, a teacher, a mentor, and a friend to many. He dreamed big, and his future was bright, a future which was unfairly taken from him. The defendant has caused unthinkable pain to our family, and we feel the negative ripple effects of this heinous act for the rest of our lives. Todd has already missed greatly in the traditions that he loved so much, birthday celebrations, Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners, family games, and so many other special things. Little did we know that when we lost our precious mother and grandmother, Todd would be taken from us six months later. Todd spoke with such eloquence at her funeral, not knowing that he would be the next family member we would be mourning. Our family has been rocked by this death, and we have seen the devastating effects on those who loved him the most. We have watched as Sandy, Todd's mother, has experienced deep grief an unimaginable pain, a tragedy that no mother should ever have to deal with. We have watched as Sean, Todd's brother, has battled bouts of deep depression and grief. And maybe worst of all, we have seen how Aaron and Cece have had to learn how to navigate life without their loving daddy. We understand that no sentence and no judgment could ever bring back what has been so selfishly taken from us, but we do ask for justice to be served. We as a family are requesting that she receive the maximum sentence that can be given for this case. Ms. Paschel, our faith in Christ is foundational to our lives. Therefore, we turn to his words and his ways. We will not retaliate. We will not seek revenge. We will find it in our hearts to forgive you. And we will rest this case into the hands of a holy and just God. We pray that you will seek forgiveness from those whom you have dealt so much pain. But ultimately, we pray that you will seek forgiveness from God, which can be found in Christ, so that you don't have to face the eternity that awaits you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you for allowing us to speak. We trust in this court to bring out about proper justice for Todd. Thank you, Mr. Mutz. <clears throat> My name is Sandy Morgan, and I am Todd's mother. I'd like and thank you for the opportunity to let us speak today. I'd like to um, show the court a couple photos, if I may. This was Todd, from Todd's funeral. There's only five pictures here, and they're supposed to kind of grasp his life as he was growing, but his life was so much more. This is when, this was the Easter before he passed away when I was at his home with his children. We went to church that day and he told me, he said, Mom, I'm 
broken. And I want, I know only God can fix it. And I want to give my life back to God. That was indeed a special day for a mom who's been praying, praying for him. Anyway, Katie, can you take that? Um, this is Todd and his brother, Sean, who he just has no words for his grief. And um, this is me and my children when they were younger. Todd was about 12 there. And this is um, when Todd first moved to Ohio when he was about 18, 19 after high school. That was his first apartment. Thanks. This is a shirt that we all had made and gathered at his cemetery to have a service on the anniversary of his death. I'm not wearing it. I will put it on later, but I had to think about Todd in all of this. And I just thought Todd would want his mom to wear something else. Um, I'd like to address you, Ms. Pichelle, in my statement. I'm Todd's mom. I always will be. Todd's not here to tell his story. Only God, Todd, and you know the truth of what happened on April 19. All I know, he was brutally murdered by you, and he basically died for nothing. You didn't even know him. Your actions to take my son's life changed my life forever. It's changed all of our lives. Even more so, you took a father from two beautiful children. They were his world, and he was theirs. On the morning of Monday, April 17, Todd and his children got up for school. They left their toys where they last played, their snacks and drinks in Aaron's bedroom where they played Minecraft, their Easter bus bucket still full of candy sat on the living room floor, their shoes and coats were on the back by the slider. They planned on coming back home to their things, but most of all to their daddy. Todd dropped him off for school. Aaron recalls his daddy's last words to him. I love you. I'll see you Wednesday. We are going to our favorite restaurant and have our favorite french fries. Because of you, Todd never got the chance to pick up his children ever again. They never got to say goodbye. When Todd did not show up to pick up Cece from school, her mother knew something was wrong because Ty would never not show up. She called 911 for a welfare check. Todd was found lying in a pool of blood just a couple of feet from the slider, his handprint on the slider indicating he had tried to get out of the house. He lay there for 12 hours before he was found. 30 hours later, I found myself hearing the words that no one should ever have to hear. Do you have a son, Todd? Yes. Well, I'm sorry to inform you that he is no longer with us. What? He's passed. My brain to protect my whole being went into shock. I went numb. I screamed. From that day forward, my life has changed. I'm sad most of the time. 
I feel like I'm living a nightmare. I want to tell everyone here, and especially Miss Peschel, about Todd. You knew nothing about him, yet you took his life. I loved him dearly. As a child, Todd was fun and energetic and intelligent and strong-willed. He was an excellent student and an overachiever. He had great ideas and he was driven even as a young boy. He was adventurous. After graduating from high school, he traveled Europe on his own. Then he went to college and eventually he graduated with a PhD in business administration. He always worked hard to achieve his goals. He taught at three universities and earned a tenure at two in a very short time. Unfortunately, he was not here to learn. He had earned a tenure at Cleveland State University. He had worked so hard that spring to submit his papers. And later at his funeral, we found out he had earned tenure. He also earned an award for his research just this past spring that he was not here to receive. This trophy sits on my buffet. But his biggest life accomplishment and most importantly to him were his two beautiful children, Aaron and Cece. They were his pride and joy. He was a good, good father. He was always concerned for them and had their best interest at heart. He played with them. They danced at home together. They sang in the car together to pass time. They played Would You Rather. They loved board games, movie nights, bedtime stories and prayers together, playing Minecraft, softball, and going to the park and the beach. He made mistakes in his life, and he was always so upset when he did. However, the evening of April 18, 2023, he made a fatal mistake, and he allowed you into his home. You brutally took his life, and the children will never experience their favorite things with Daddy again. Instead of being with Daddy, they are separate, separated into two separate homes. They don't get to see each other very often. And it breaks my heart so much. They are already growing up. They've had birthday parties and sports events and school events and many other important things that he has not been there for. They will graduate from high school, college, and get married someday and have children. Their daddy will be missed for every moment of their life, for everything. The pain I feel for them is unbearable. My grief, I cannot even express. I know now, though, what deep grief is, and I also know what God's grace really is. I experience it every day. The depth of pain I feel is beyond understanding. There's just a deep, deep hole in my heart. My boy, I miss him so much, and I loved him so much. I miss his visits, his calls, his conversation, and his chuckle. I find myself, it rings in my mind. Most days I feel empty. I have lost my zeal for life in general. I find myself looking forward and longing for that day. I see Todd again in heaven. And many days I don't want to keep going, but I have to. Because God still has a plan for me. I have to be here in this place for my grandchildren, whom I love dearly, my son, and all of my family. In conclusion, I would like to say, I would like to say, I hope you burn in hell, but I can't because I'm a Christian. I serve a God of love and a God of justice. I know that it is not God's will for anyone, not even you. What he wants is that you truly repent for this evil act you have committed. 
I sincerely hope you will find true forgiveness that only Jesus gives us when we ask. This is the only way you will ever be truly free. Todd's family deserves to know what really happened that day. If you ever find the courage to tell the truth, I would like to hear it from you. His children would like to hear it, I'm sure, someday when they're adults. And his family would like to know. May God help you, Miss Peschel. And I hope you, in all of those dark moments where you'll be sitting, that you will find and seek him. Your Honor, I would like to see Miss Pichelle pay dearly for taking my son's life, for the pain she has caused for so many, especially his children. I want justice for Todd, and I hope you will assign the mas maximum sentence to her. In finality, I want to thank Detective Rock and the entire Hudson Police Department for all the hard work and hours they put into solving this for Todd. I also want to thank the prosecution team, Prosecutor Laprenzi and Prosecutor Sellerson and Katie here, my advocate, our advocate, for all the hard work they put in to have justice for Todd. You are all truly amazing and have been a support for our family during this whole time. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Morgan. <coughs> Mr. LaPenzi? Thank you, Judge. Um, at this time, you know, my, I could say a lot of things about this case. I think the court already knows. We already took, took a plea yesterday. I don't want to say anything that's going to diminish or distract from the family. They've been very gracious here today, and, and I think their words were profound. So I, I'm not going to say anything about the court, to the court about this case. However, I do will indicate that um, this was an agreed sentence. Um, I know the family is asking for the maximum sentence, which obviously you know they have a right to do. But on behalf of this state, after discussing with them and the uh, Hudson Police Department, uh, we made the decision that a life sentence with the parole eligibility at 23 years would be a fair sentence based on the other sentences in this courthouse for a similar type acts. Um, in regard to that, we also took into consideration, as you can see today, the, how this family, as they put it, has been rocked. Um, and taking that into consideration, we could have taken this case to trial, gotten more convictions, more charges, and maybe, maybe a higher sentence. However, putting this family through that, we felt the best thing for them, best thing for this case, and best thing, you know, um, to be consistent with other cases of similar nature, we agreed to this 23-year sentence, uh, life sentence with parole eligibility after 20 years plus three years consecutive to a gun spec. Um, and then based on that, Judge, we would ask this court to accept that recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lapenzi. Mr. Sellerson, did you want to add anything? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you. All right, I'll now turn to the defense. Mr. Laborn? Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. We, too, ask the court to consider adopting the negotiated plea. Uh, we believe it is a fair and just sentence for everyone involved. Um, let me just state that this is a tragedy for, for two families here. Uh, Ms. Paschal sits in front of you with a very limited criminal record. At the time of the offense, was living a difficult life, the details of which uh, we shared with the court yesterday prior to the plea, but she was living a difficult life. Despite that, she does have family here in the courtroom um, that support her, that love her, that are going to help her through the next several years. I think it's important to note that Ms. Paschal almost immediately um, accepted responsibility for this offense and expressed remorse. At the first opportunity that an offer was provided by the state, we appreciate that offer, she accepted it. Um, this was not a situation where she uh, relished the fact of putting the family through more trauma of a trial, and she has not done that. She did not want to do that. She wanted to accept responsibility. She's expect, uh, expressed remorse privately to us about uh, her actions, and she is truly sorry. So I think that this is a fair resolution, 
and I'd ask the court to consider adopting that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Munyer, anything you wish to add? Nothing, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Paschel, you, as the defendant in this matter, have a right to make a statement. You're not required to do so, but if you would like to, now is the time. Um, yes, to his family. Um, I'm very sorry, and I hope that one day that you can find it in your hearts to forgive me. All right, Ms. Peschel, I will remind you of a couple of things. First and foremost, um, did you execute the violent offender data, um, violent offender database form? She's going to sign it right now, Judge. All right. All right. Now, I know that you've gone over this form with your attorneys, but I am still going to read it into the record so you are fully aware of your responsibilities. You have been convicted or pled guilty to a qualifying violent offender offense as defined by the Ohio Revised Code. Since you will be sentenced to a prison term, you must enroll in the database personally with the sheriff of the county in which you reside 10 day days after your release. You are required to provide to the sheriff certain information, which includes your full name, and any aliases you use, your residence, your social security number, any driver's license number, or CDL number, or state identification number. Information regarding the offense of which you have been convicted, and the name and address of any place where you are employed. The name and address of any school or institution um, of education that you attend, the license plate number of any vehicle owned or operated by you or registered in your name, the vehicle information of that vehicle, and any description of that vehicle a description of any scars, tattoos, or other distinguishing marks on your person. You are required to provide the sheriff fingerprints and palm prints. The sheriff will also obtain a photograph of you at the time of your enrollment. After the date of your initial enrollment, you are required to re-enroll annually. You must update and or amend any of the information described above that has changed and provide any additional information requested at the county sheriff's office within 10 days of the anniversary of the calendar date on which you were initially enrolled. If you change your residence address during the 10-year enrollment period, you must provide written notice of that change to the sheriff with whom you most recently enrolled and to the sheriff in the county in which you intend to reside within three days of the ch change of address. You are required to comply with all of these requirements for a period of 10 years after any release, unless your sentencing court determines otherwise. Your expected residence address would be Summit County. Therefore, you shall enroll upon um, release um, to the Sheriff's Office located at 205 East Crozier Street. Ms. Paschel, failure to enroll or failure to verify any residence at the specified times will result in a criminal prosecution. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. In addition, I will remind you that you do have certain appellate rights. They are limited because you did enter into a plea in this matter. However, if you wish to file an appeal, you must do that within 30 days of today, which is your sentencing date. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. You will be entitled to jail time credit. That number I do not have for you at this point, but it will be reflected in your journal entries. You must pay attention to that when you receive that. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. During your time at the Ohio Reformatory for Women, you shall not use any drugs, alcohol, or illicit substances, and you may be subject to random testing for that while you're incarcerated. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Um, thank you to the family um, for being here, for Ms. Paschel's family, or Mr. Morgan's family for being here throughout all these processes. I, I fu I'm fully aware of how much support Mr. Morgan had in the community, um, not just professionally, but certainly familially. Um, I think every one of you have been at every court proceeding. Um, it just shows what a um, important person he was in your life. Um, there's nothing that the court can do to make this better, to make this okay, um, to make this any easier. Um, I will say that the avoidance of a of a trial um, is a benefit to everyone because it is an extremely traumatic experience for everyone involved. And um, there would be images and things that you would have to see that you could never unsee. And so I appreciate Ms. Paschal for taking responsibility for this. And um, 
making it so that the family does not have to go through any additional trauma based on the actions that occurred um, back in April of 2023. Um, based on the facts and circumstances in consideration of all relevant sentencing factors, applying the minimum sanction the court has determined will protect the public yet also punish the offender um, and not provide any um, unnecessary burden on state or local resources. A period of incarceration is certainly necessary due to the nature of the offense, the loss that's suffered by all of the victims in this matter. Um, I'm sentencing you to a period of 20 years to life on count one, aggra aggravated murder and unclassified uh, felony. In addition, that sentence will run consecutive to the three-year firearm specification, which is attached to that um, count one. That firearm specification three-year sentence must be served first, it must be consecutive, and it is in fact mandatory. This will make you eligible for parole, which there's no guarantee of that, at the earliest at 23 years, but you could serve up to life in prison for this matter. Do you understand all of that, Ms. Pachel? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Um, I will reiterate that the parties did reach this um, joint recommendation and it was provided to the court prior to the acceptance of the plea. Um, and it was, I would say, poured over by many of the people involved. Um, so I am following that for all of those reasons. Um, did I forget anything on behalf of the state? No, Your Honor, thank you. On behalf of the defense? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, at this time I'm gonna execute the violent offender database form and we will <coughs> file that um, and have it made part of the record. Thank you, everyone. Don't ever let them tell you don't. You hear me, ladies? Don't ever let them tell you don't. I love you. Don't ever let them tell you don't. I love you. Because you definitely don't love From your kids, too. 